Howdy folks, Sapper here, a.k.a. Sean, and we're bringing you Next War, World War Three, Turn 5, Part 3. I think I got all that right, because there's a lot going on. Uh, just some things that I had to make very small corrections on from the last play, so we've got to go over here. So these, I oh, almost, uh, almost knocked my Korea map off the table, that would have been bad. In fact, let me look at it, make sure the chit didn't shift around. All right, so no disasters, luckily, because that could have been bad, especially on that map, because there's a lot of pieces on that one. So, I destroyed this airbase. But, when you do the, there was already a strike one marker on it, so I'm only doing collateral damage for a strike two, even though it will end up being destroyed. And the same situation happened here. This was a strike two already on there, but I only did a strike one when I hit it the second time for the collat. So, and the same thing goes for there. Um, something that I forgot to do is I always watch my videos after I post them up on YouTube. I always watch them once, right? Because... Uh, the way I record is I record from my cell phone, so I just basically, there's no editing involved whatsoever other than my phone will only record like 30 minutes at a time or whatever, so it, it'll it do 30 minutes or so, and then it'll stop, and then it'll start recording again. I guess the, the files can only be in, in chunks of so much, so the only editing, editing I do is pasting those two two, three, four, however many videos together to make one video rather than having a 10 minute video, a 20 minute video and, you know, uploading a zillion times. So that's the only editing I do. So I always go back and rewatch them just to, just to, you know, it's kind of like a quality control thing, even though I wouldn't go back and, you know, as long as some of these videos are, I probably wouldn't go back and, and, uh, do anything about it but i just like to rewatch them but something i noticed is that i had forgotten i had a strike set for the chinese um air base holding boxes and we've got a couple stealth bombers and is that a that's an f-22 so i wanted to do a strike here um detection track is a five of course china has a wax advantage but this whole strike group is composed of nothing but stealth. So they, needless to say, they did not get detected. And I was able to destroy one air base and get a strike to on another one. Because those stealth bombers are really good. So these guys will go back to the flown box because they have done it. They've got a job well done on these guys. So these guys are based in Guam, I think. Um, is Guam, Guam is long range, so that's two. Yeah, I couldn't have, they couldn't have reached. Yep, almost fell down. Um, where was he? Was that, that must have been him right there. So this guy probably, I'm assuming he probably was based out of Japan. Because otherwise, he, he wouldn't have been able to reach from, from Guam. I don't remember. But we'll just say he was out of Japan. So, oh, and also, we were going, we did a naval bombardment of here, but it did not. That's the last part of the strike phase, is, uh, or the last kind of strike you can do is naval bombardment, and they were unsuccessful. So now we're doing collateral damage. And so I was doing collateral damage for the destroyed um, air base in the holding box. And I rolled a three on a destroyed. So that is... No, I don't think I rolled a three. Because I'm pretty sure... I think it was a two because I was looking at that. That's what I looked at. I ended up so strike versus air base. So the allies get to choose one air unit 
to give a step loss to, and they lose, the Chinese lose one air mobile point. So, um, we have a, we have different air mobile points on different displays. So I'll choose to, we will, hmm, what do we got here? You got a lot of stuff in the PRC holding box. Of course, that PRC holding box is the same as that PRC holding box is the same as that PRC holding box. So I think I'll I'll take one off of the uh, I'll take one off of that one, and then for the air unit that I decide to reduce, I'm going to do that one right there. So I'm going to take out. China's only stealth fighter. Actually, they might have had. Yeah, they have another one right there. So I'm taking out their, taking out a stealth fighter. I believe. Let me go look. I think that is a uh, couple victory points. So that's two victory points. So yeah, I wanted to get rid of that stealth fighter for sure. So let's roll for the strike two. So we got a zero. That's probably about as good as you can get. So strike two. So I get to pick another air unit to reduce. The Chinese pick one of their own air units to reduce, and they lose another air mobile point. China will choose to lose an air mobile point. Hmm. They'll, they'll lose the one in Vietnam. The Allies, what do we want to do? The Allies have... Can we take out... Let's, let's reduce... We'll reduce this guy right here. So the Allies are going to reduce this guy. And now the Chinese get to choose a unit to reduce. They'll, they'll, they'll choose one of these crappy little ones here. Because they're not nearly as... Yeah, we'll do that one. So that takes care of those two holding boxes. Now we need to do these guys here. Of course, these are going to be allied, so it's not going to be nearly as as nice. So the black die, gray die. So that's going to be nothing. All right, so they lose an air mobile point. So I've already deducted the air mobile point. So now Vietnam is down to one. But China gets to choose an air unit. So I think gets to choose an air unit to reduce. So do I take out an air unit or do I just reduce like one of their, their only decent air superiority fighter? I think I'll do that. And so that takes care of these two boxes. So we can get rid of that. And now we'll roll for that one. That's an airfield, so it's probably... So a 9 is not going to be good enough to do anything on that airfield. So that takes care of the collateral damage. Now we can do headquarters and artillery strikes. So I'll be back in a little bit after I decide if I want to do any of those. Normally it's better to use the headquarters for combat support. All right, I have just wrapped up the headquarters art artillery strike portion of the first strike phase. And I did do some. Because this is, a, this is a contested phase, we only have one movement in combat segment. So... In an initiative phase, you got the initiative move in combat segment, and then you have the basic move in combat segment. Well, now we only have the basic move in combat segment, so I don't have to reserve as much stuff because I'm only going to get one combat phase. So I decided 
to use that artillery, had that artillery right there, to try and increase the strike marker on that, which I was unsuccessful in doing. The Taiwan or Republic of China, they've got a headquarters here. They decided to reserve that guy to use in support of the defense that's going to happen probably here or here, because I know one of these two hexes is probably going to get attacked. Uh, the only strikes that we did here on this map is we did the Supreme Headquarters for each side. Um, the North Koreans tried to, to hit that uh, 2nd Infantry Division unit unsuccessfully. And then the South Koreans tried to hit this guy here. What is that? The 2nd Corps. A 2nd Corps Armor Brigade and they were unsuccessful as well. There was no headquarters artillery strikes in the Vietnam theater because that is an initiative move in combat, or that's an initiative turn, so there's going to be a little bit more combat going on on that one, so I need to keep more of that headquarter, those valuable headquarters kind of in reserve. All right, first supply phase. So Taiwan's not an issue because um, all of our stuff is on the west coast. It's not dependent upon air superiority or the weather. We have control of the inshore box, so we are good as far as Taiwan goes. China is good. There are no Taiwan units in isolation, so very easy. Korea, on the other hand, whoo boy, I tell you. The North Koreans are going to be hurt in this turn. So honestly, it was easier to just remove out of supply markers. And what I did is I put arrows. So basically all of these guys, this whole clump of guys here is out of supply because of that MSU got destroyed. The limit of this urban hex are these blue diamonds. Well, that one can go another one or another one two so so it doesn't matter here so that's not going to make a difference so basically all these guys are out of supply and then basically everybody from this row here east is out of supply because if you look the allies so we've got this supply depot here they've destroyed that bridge so supply can't go that way. They've destroyed that bridge, so it can't come around and go this way. And then they destroyed that bridge, so we can't send supply that way. And if you look, it's kind of hard to see. This is part of the problem with the clutter. This road here goes to here and then south. There's nothing. This road only goes from here and then over. So basically... I think I probably need to check if that guy's in supply. He might be able to push supply to these guys. Maybe. What kind of hex is that? That looks like Rough Woods. I have to see what motorized movement is in Rough Woods. Let me double check that real quick. That might be a very small case of a couple of units still being in supply. All right, so that is the case. So we have eight motorized movement points. So that's one, two, three, six motorized movement points to there. So that headquarters is in supply. And that's rough woods. That's rough woods. So it is three motorized movement points so he can he can kick supply another four motorized movement points so it's three to here so these two guys are in supply and then it's a half movement point along that road so these guys are in supply so basically let's do go ahead and do that and that that's like the border of out of supply stuff. This guy's actually out of supply because he is in, if you look right there, he is in marsh and there's no road going into that. So it's like six motorized movement points through marsh. So he is out of supply. These guys are good. 
this guy is out of supply because of the random event that put a mechanized unit out of supply and we cannot remove it on game or on the first supply phase so the north koreans are in a bad situation right now because almost everything is out of supply so the allies needed some breathing room and they got it and look what i did not do i didn't roll for collateral damage there so that is an air base let me do that see these little arrows they do help because if there's one on the map and I didn't, you know, they're just visual reminders. So when I get done doing, when I usually when I roll for something like that, I'll remove the arrow. So the arrow has not been removed. Let's roll a die. So that is a zero. So that, in fact, will be some kind of result. So the allies lose an air mobile point and they have to reduce a unit. So that is Korea. Do the allies have air mobile points? Yes. So they lose one permanently. And then we have to reduce a unit. Wow, we have no reduced units. Well, it's going to be one of it's going to be hmm this guy has no standoff capability, but he's a better pilot. What to do? What to do? That's kind of a tough little choice right there because those planes are equal other than the standoff capability. Ooh, these guys are not, they don't have long range dogfight capability, so I will reduce this guy. There we go. So, and now we can remove that. Yes, yeah, strike two, thank you. And that is that. So, supply has been done now we go to the initiative move in combat phase and the only place that, that will happen is in vietnam because contested contested so some things that i decided to attempt or to rectify the supply situation you can create supply depots and msus and also try emergency supply during the first supply phase so the north koreans obviously didn't plan their supply very good or they didn't anticipate that the allies were going to take out their supply sources the way they did and or bridges so uh what did they do i created an msu right here i created an msu here another one um i created a new supply depot here so this 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 one will probably get bombed out of existence because this seems to be a bad spot but so I created another supply depot, spent quite a few supply points to do all this stuff. I attempted emergency supply of this headquarters, which is basically the parent headquarters for these units here. Um, I didn't, I was not successful in providing emergency supply. I also tried to provide emergency supply for a headquarters here, which is basically the parent headquarters of the 806th and i was not successful there either it is extremely hard so you can su resupply individual units or you can supply let's see if i can get this in here without wrecking everything so to supply just an individual ground unit you need to roll a five or higher so it's a little bit better than a 50 50 chance and to supply a headquarters you need to roll less than a two. So I did not roll less than a two in either case because I figured if I could get the headquarters resupplied, it resupplies all subordinate units to that headquarters. So it was worth the effort or the, the chance that I would be able to do that. And unfortunately, I was not able to do that. So there you have it. Um, supply Depot and some MSUs created, but no emergency resupply so now i think we are ready to do initiative move and combat for the vietnam theater all right so we have concluded the um, initiative movement segment so basically we have chinese units surrounding i don't have my tweezers 
So Lao Kai, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm probably butchering that. So that's what we got there. This guy's got a strike marker on it. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, up here. Is there a town there? There is. It is Dong Dang. Isn't there a line in a Red Hot Chili Peppers song? It's around the world. They say something like Dong Dang Do or something. Anyway, that was my very dry attempt at humor. So, all right. So we've got, we're trying to surround Dong Dang and take that. And then we moved a few, I think just those guys right there are all we've moved. And that's about it. Everything else on here is Vietnamese. But let's go over to the naval display and see what's going on over here. Uh, so nothing here. This is where it's going to get kind of confusing, right? Because if I'm at different phases, for example, we have an initiative move and combat segment over there. So I can move naval units there. But then in the normal movement phase, the basic move and combat segment, I could move units again. I, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's... Maybe I confused myself there. But uh, anyway, the Malaysians. So I was looking at what they've got. They've got a surface action group. They've got this headquarters. And they've got these three, looks like airborne infantry or whatever. So I decided that it looks like the Chinese have convinced the Malaysians to uh, move into the, the Spratly Islands area. The surface action group got in there without any problem. So now this zone is contested. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. Um, it was was Taiwan. I think if units from, from two different nations or opposing nations are in there, then it's contested. Um, but as soon as the U.S. units move into there, it will definitely be contested. So I guess control, because we haven't rolled for control, I guess control would still be allied controlled. Um, but anyway, so they decided, the Malaysians decided to uh, use their air mobile movement to move into the Spratly Islands. And now we've got Malaysian troops occupying the Spratlys. I do need to get a control marker. So let's go ahead and reach into my bag of control markers and pull out a control marker. There we go. So now we have to clear that. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that the... The uh, the Philippines have taken notice of that. So things are going to get interesting, I think. So that's it for the movement phase. I don't really think the Chinese had a lot, much else to do over there in Vietnam. I looked over here at these units because th these are in China as well. So... All these are motorized or mechanized units, so there was really no way for me to get them to Vietnam. So that's why I didn't move anything out of that box. Because remember, this is the PRC holding box, which exists here and exists here. And there's also a PRC holding box over there, too. So anyway, that's it for movement. On to combat. All right, initiative combat has just been resolved. I didn't really use any any uh, air support. I don't really think I felt the need to do that. Uh, so we attacked Lao Kai with pretty much everything, and we were able to remove the... So losses always come from the combat outposts first. So we were able to... We, I think we got a really good result. I think it was like three-step losses and... So, kicked those guys out of Cal Lai and advanced after combat. We... Dong Dang was uh, overrun. There was a combat outpost here, which we invaded and moved in. So, the mechanized infantry advanced... Oh, wait a minute. I don't think they could advance, too, because that is jungle and highland terrain. So, they will stop right there. And then... Yep, the same would be said for right here. So they attacked from here, knocked out the combat outpost, and then advanced right there. Um, I think, I think that's all we were able to knock out. I mean, we caused a couple. We caused any step losses? No. Yeah. So the only step losses were here. So the only thing that was actually lost were these four combat outposts. 
So there you have it. We just pushed forward a little bit. So looking at this section right here, I could retreat either down this side of the river or this side of the river. And unfortunately, these rivers aren't named. So I think I saw in one of Mitch's comments where they it was a, they forgot to add the names of the rivers. So I decided to go down this side because we do have this installation and a city right there. Um, and then I don't... I, I'm pretty sure that a combat outpost isn't worth any victory points. I don't know about... Um, towns, if they're worth any victory points, towns are worth victory points in Taiwan, but there's no, there's no box that tells you what's worth what. So I have to dig into the GSR probably a little bit and find out what is worth victory points or even let's look at the display over here. Oh, yep. I can see it on the display. All right, victory points. So we get one per town per air missile strike on Thailand. Okay. Mm, capture or destroy enemy controlled installation. So the Chinese will get, I believe they've destroyed two or three. Mm, this should have been on that map over there. All right. Okay, so uh, look at this. So I wonder if this supersedes because it mentions next war Taiwan. I wonder if this supersedes that one over there. And that's going to be kind of not a fan of that, but okay. Um. All right, so yeah, we've got some towns that we got to look at and some air bases were destroyed or at least one air base that I know of. All right, so let's look. We've got one installation, two installations. That's not an installation, so I think that's four points. That'll be five points. That'll be six points. Okay, it looks like six points. So let me put... There we go. That belongs to China now, the People's Republic. Thanks. The People's Republic. Thanks, the People's Republic of Vietnam. Is it the People's Republic of Vietnam? I think it might be the SRV. What's the SRV? Oh, so the PRC thanks the SRV. So PRC is People's Republic, and the SRV is the Socialist Republic. So PRC says thank you to the SRV, and that will wrap up the initiative movement and combat phase. We will now move to... Oop, here we go. So we are moved, combat. We now go to elite reaction. All right, but I've got to go run, so I will talk to you guys later. Howdy folks, Sapper here, a.k.a. Sean, and I'm bringing you Next War, World War Three. This will be Turn 5, I think, Part 3. And you're probably hearing this again because I've recorded some stuff yesterday, and it'll be this will be just added on to that. So you're going to get a second intro. Uh, where, did I, where did I leave off? I think when uh, I was on here last, we had just done... The initiative movement and combat segment. So now we are on the elite reaction movement. Uh, I didn't do any. Vietnam doesn't have a lot of elite units. I think the only ones that I could find were right here in Hanoi. So I think I'm going to leave them there for the time being because I don't know what's going to happen to the west. And I don't really know what's going to happen up here to the north. So I'm going to leave them in place so that they will be able to maybe respond kind of surprised me that these marines are not 
efficiency rating six sevens or eights well at least sixes but uh yeah so no elite reaction movement now we are we just did the exploitation movement so i wanted to kind of catch that before i moved on to the exploitation combat so you know obviously we're moving moving east so we moved these guys um jungle really slows stuff down so this is my first experience with the uh the jungle terrain luckily we didn't have very far to move here so we tried to encircle this guy i don't think that this guy he's got a move of six i don't think he can get there because that is, would be non-road movement it's highland jungle or is it rough jungle oh man i'm gonna say it's rough jungle so rough is three for motorized and then it's plus three for jungle and then there's a zock there actually you know what i can't move there because you can always move one hex as long as it's not prohibited so there we go we'll move that guy so see just things that you catch every once in a while when you talk through stuff so maybe talking to yourself you're not really crazy you're actually solving problems um so move these guys so there we go we'll do all that i've got the arrows down just to kind of show me not that i really need to on this map because there's not a lot of counter clutter but the arrows are just representative of potential uh, potential attacks that I can do because remember this is exploitation combat so there are two column shifts to the left so it's a little bit more difficult for the attacker to do the combat he's going to be at, at less of an advantage you know and that's kind of to represent um, you know we're overextending ourselves the troops are tired right so you know each turn is three and a half days and this will be like the second attack we've done in three days you know, the operation tempo is at a very high state. So that I guess that column shift is kind of there to represent troop fatigue and, and supply. Well, not necessarily supply because that is represented, but maybe troop fatigue. Um, so Chinese supplies from a map edge. Yeah, you got some glare there, but yep, it, you know, it's the map edge, right? So it's going to be three hexes and then I've got an MSU. So well, MSU. That's just to remind me how far it is. I don't think I really need it up here yet because these guys aren't far enough down the road. So seeing how interdiction has really worked over in Korea, you can expect the Allies probably to do some interdictions along, along these highways because supply sources for China are the edge of the map. But uh, So there you have it. I'm going to work out what combats are going to look like for the Chinese in these various spots. And, and we'll get back with this one kind of looked tempting at first because there's a port there. But honestly, uh, on this particular, on this particular front or theater, I don't see the importance of ports nearly as much as I do in, uh, Taiwan because it's trying to get guys on to Taiwan. Right. But I mean, this, this is the border for China right here. So, so all I have to do is when I get reinforcements is they come in off the map or the same. This is China right over here. So I don't need ports as much. Basically, it'd be more of a denial thing right here, I guess. But uh, anyway, I'll be back in a bit. All right. So I've just tallied up odds for the four different areas that I could possibly do combat. It looks like I'll probably do that in three places and then one place I'm not going to. So... Looks like here it's going to be 18 to 3. So we have... It's because one of these has a strike on it, so that is 3 defense. It's in flat with no anything. So definitely a terribly... You're to, these guys are at a disadvantage. So these guys can't attack them because that's a major river right there. So these guys are not involved in it. So it's just this, this stack here. Um, mechanized infantry in attacking in flat gets one and a half. So that would be nine plus nine is 18. So that's how I get 18 to three minus two column shifts for exploitation, uh, plus three column shifts for, um, efficiency rating difference 
plus one for mm, plus one for artillery. So that gives the gives us an overall plus two column shifts on the six to one column, which is the max column. Let me set that down real quick. Which is the max column for flat terrain. So I will go ahead and roll. And that is an eight. That's not very good. So I didn't, I decided not to use, I don't think I used headquarters support on this. I did use, oh, you know what? Hold on. I used, I think I used the headquarters there to support that defense rather than that defense. So that is eight on the six to one. That is one loss and a retreat. So the guy with the strike marker will survive because we use the guy without the strike marker because a strike marker reduces your efficiency rating by one. So this guy's dead. He has to retreat too. So we'll go one, two right there. And then these guys, because they are mechanized infantry and this is flat terrain, they can actually advance twice. So boom, look at that. Cannot get away. So there's that. And now we go here. So it's a three defense plus four for the headquarters. So that is a seven. I don't know why I have that listed as eight. It should not be eight. It should probably be seven. It's not really going to matter. It's still... Um, it's still going to be 11 to 7 odds. Let's, let's make sure that we're right here. So that is 7. And then if we supported it with, yeah, we supported it with the headquarters over here, over there. So that makes it uh, 11. So 11 to 7, it's still going to be 1 to 1. Um, 1 to 1, minus 2 column shifts for exploitation, plus 2 for efficiency rating difference, plus 1 for... Um, surprise, and you know what? I think I used the artillery for this guy. It doesn't matter. Um, so this combat down here, it, it wouldn't have, I don't think that would have made a difference anyway. So yes, the artillery did go to support the 75th Group Army, 37th Brigade, and 120, 122nd Brigade. Um... So there you have it. So we have a plus two column shift on the one-to-one -one column in flat. Which gets us to the nine column. So that basically gets us to the two-to-one column. Um, let's see here. He's in a city, so that's my plus one die roll. We have a remainder and odds, so that's a plus one die roll. So I don't think there is... Doesn't look like there are any die roll modifiers, so we are on the two to one column in flat woods. So let's go ahead and roll that up. And that is a three. That's a little bit better than. So it looks like each side takes a loss, and this guy has to retreat. All right, so this is the question Does he retreat this way? Or do you retreat? You know, leave your, basically, what's going to happen is you're going to leave your headquarters stranded out there if you go this way, which I think we need to pull towards Hanoi because that's the, the capital. So we will go one, two. Now let's go ahead and erase, erase this nonsense right here. We don't need it anymore. So one, two. You guys have the option because you're mechanized motorized to chase but i think we want to try to probably we'll probably stop i think we'll stop these guys are stuck in the jungle or they're in a jungle and on high ground so they're definitely in a better spot but we'll go there or or let's do this we'll do that and that so that's that All right, let's go ahead and there we go. I'm going to move that a little closer. So this one's going to end up being one-to-one -one odds. Um, but the bad part is, is we are attacking 
that is, I think that is rough. Rough jungle. I don't know if the jungle, let's see, what does the jungle do? Armor and mech times one half, which I think that's already figured into the calculations. That's why it's 17 to 6, even though I'm attacking from here, here, and here, or would be. Leg infantry's defense is doubled. So that's why he's a 12. Actually, he's a 10 because he's got a strike on him. So that's 10 plus 4 is 14. So that should be 14 to 17. It's still 1 to 1. Doesn't matter. But because that's jungle terrain and we have, we're going to have the minus 2 column shifts for exploitation. And I think they have a 6 efficiency guy. Now, there's only, so we're... We're not going to get the column shifts that we need. So we're not going to attack there. That's the reason. Because of the jungle terrain plus exploitation combat disadvantages. And then the last one over here. It's going to be 8 to 33. Because that's flat. So these guys are times 1.5. So that's 9 plus 9 is 18. That is 6 plus 9 is 15. So 15 plus 18 is 33. Whew, all that quick math, right? So column shifts, we're going to be a plus one column shift on the 33 to 8, which is basically 4 to 1 with the remainder. So the remainder actually is going to be a plus one die roll because you get plus one for the town, plus one for the additional installation. So that's plus two. But the remainder makes it a plus one. So it is the, what did I say? 4 to 1 column flat but two column shifts to the right so that is the 13 column on column shifts with a plus one to the die roll so that is a three and that will be two step losses and that's enough to knock that guy out so he is gone we will do we have leg infantry Tell me I've got some leg infantry. I do not have any leg. I was hoping to have legs so that we can, because you got to do a clearing operation because that is a port. Um, I think we can do this. So because it's mechanized, you can move two. So I will go one, two, and then these guys will just go one. And we have to do a clearing operation for that port. And that will wrap up Exploitation Combat. So I think this is probably long enough with the stuff that I recorded yesterday to pop up a video for today. So we will have this will be the end of Part 3, so we will see you in Part 4.